we can get started. Let me just add the link again for those who just joined. Here, hello, Rodolfo, MT. So please add your names to the agenda. And okay, do this. Let's get started. Okay, welcome everyone to our very first glossary meeting this year. Um, so um, yeah, as you all know, this is a CNCF meeting, so be kind to each other. Uh, but we are all kind of, I know we are an awesome group. Um, not a lot on my end, to be honest, or on the glossary in general, um, since last, uh, the last meeting, um, we are, I'm really hoping that we can get the cloud native learning journey, uh, like rolling. So it did get, uh, it was pitched to the CNCF leadership team and they think it's a good idea. And I think we're going to do this. And basically if you click on the link, you will see what it all is about. If you haven't done so, I've linked to that several times, but basically what it will do is uh, help people discover uh, the glossary and other resources, right? Like right now, one of the things is um, the glossary is in the CNCF uh, navigate uh, website's navigation bar, and uh, but it's not like there's a lot of other information there too. So not a lot of people discover it, right? And um, there is not only the CNCF glossary; there are a lot of other projects too, and Alisa knows as well about the maturity model and all that stuff that is really good for people involved in the cloud native ecosystem. And we want to have like a hub where people can see everything from things that are very like, like not based, like the one-on-ones really when you have no idea and are really starting from scratch until the things that are super advanced. We want to put everything in a recommended uh, list so that we have like a learning path, right? Like a recommended learning path for people instead of having them yeah, stumble around the internet, trying to find the resources where they're at in their learning journey and they may find it or not at all. So I think that's kind of the issue because I think we have lots of group at the CNCF that are creating really good content, content. but it's all disconnected. So that's kind of the idea. And so, yeah, I think like if it is implemented, it, it should give it like a big, big boost as well. Uh, and I have to admit things have been very slow on my end because I have family visit and I will be on PTO <laughs> for two weeks looking forward for that <laughs> so right now it's like family like work family and then uh, uh then it's gonna be just uh, uh completely gone so um yeah so no not not a lot on that front but hopefully the learning journey that's something that I'm kind of really passionate about and hoping to get going um yeah, so off to Seuko. Uh, okay, uh, let me share. Uh, let me share an issue regarding uh, localization branches. Uh, as I mentioned in last uh, working group meeting, uh, there are uh, several major changes in uh, our repository in especially in main branch so uh, uh, maintainers spoke to uh, update or localization development branches so uh, i opened an issue uh, umbrella issue so uh, i already uh, shared this issue to all uh, select channels for each uh, localization teams. And please uh, look at this issue and try to update uh, your development branch accordingly. Uh, in case of this issue, uh, we have target date, target date for all uh, localization branches. So that's uh, February. Uh, 12 actually, and uh, maybe a little bit extended, but uh, if you, if uh, there is no, there is uh, localization branch which 
is not updated accordingly, uh, uh, peers to that branch will face some uh, check failure issues. So please try to update your branches. And if you see the issue, you will see some examples. And I know uh, there are some folks and maintainers for localization teams who can update uh, the branch. So uh, that's all. Uh, is there any question or uh, request regarding this request? Okay, if not, uh, we can go to next item. I have a, one question. Um, sure. uh, did, did I understand it right? We have to merge the main into our branches? Uh, uh, we. Yeah, we yeah, need to be... every every team do it self that branch. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. We need to update uh, the development branch by using main branch. So, okay. uh, if you try to uh, if you make a a PR to merge main branch into uh, development branch, then uh, the branch can be updated by that PR. OK, good. Yeah, yeah. in the issue, you can find uh, Korean localization team development branch PR. It is an example. It is very simple. If there is no conflict between branches, Okay, if you, if you don't know and you you are trying to update, then you can ask anything to me or uh, other folks who can control the branch. Good, thanks. Okay, I can think we can move on to next item. Uh, localization team updates for individual teams I see. Uh, Spanish and Italian and Bengali try to update and share their team. So Spanish first. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Rodolfo. This is the first time that I joined to this meeting. Uh, Welcome. I, Welcome. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I, I will do the status for Spanish team. Uh, Two terms were added to the DevS branch. Eight uh, were updated. Two are open, and six and uh, six issues are in progress. Uh, we have translated uh, forty three files, uh, and we recently uh, updated our DevS branch and sync with main. But as commented second, uh, we will do the rebase again as it is recommended. Um, and we are having an, an open issue to have code spaces support. This is uh, easy and, and recommended for those that uh, are starting uh, doing contributions to the project. So we are uh, in, in that track. And also we have another issue open that is to propose a GitHub action to stale issues that are not being worked uh, in several days or weeks. And that's all from us. So those are discussion points? I, I don't know, because you mentioned that. Uh, is there anything? The, the, or should uh, we wait? Uh, uh, actually, some... yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I moved the, those items to round robin and discussion issue. Oh, okay. So, yeah, maybe it's not okay. only for the Spanish team issue. It is, uh, it can be shared to globally. Maybe I can explain, explain a little bit more in the round robin and open discussion session regarding those two sub items. Yeah. 
Okay. I think it's my turn for Italian team. <laughs> so <clears throat> we have 13 terms published. 34 terms merge into Dev IT, not to the main brand, to the main uh, repository. Five terms in review. 13 terms uh, still to be translated. And we created a project on GitHub so that we have the boards and we can work together. We can better orchestrate and coordinate which terms are where, uh, who is doing what. Uh, because we were using Trello at the beginning, but it's too distracting because you have Trello for one thing, GitHub for another. So one of us was smart enough to create this uh, project, not me. And uh, it's much more easy. It's easier for even for the onboarding, future onboarding, we hope. Um, as uh, more or less, we have 68 terms ready. Uh, that could be ready, but I don't know the exact number of the terms in English as per now. I don't know if you can give us this uh, piece of information. I'm, I'm not know, sure too. Yeah, you're not sure. To so we have to count those, <laughs> right? No, uh, maybe you had that list or, already, but doesn't matter. Uh, sure. So, Actually, because... uh, <laughs> if we build the site by using Hugo, then we will see how many terms, how many documents. I will. I will. Yeah. Right. I will show how to do that. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Just keep, to keep track, and uh, we are the team. Uh, is made of three people right now. Uh, we were six, we are now three. <laughs> so <laughs> we are trying to attract new newcomers, new, new, new people uh, over time. And that's it. <clears throat> oh, by the way, um, we had a meetup uh, last week in Italy. So me and the other two people uh, we, are, we work for competitors, but we have this meetup together to promote the glossary together in Italy. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it was very funny. It was fun. Yeah. I'm sorry, I missed the whole thing. My Zoom crashed. <laughs> so, oh, but I'll yeah. see the, I see the notes. <laughs> yeah. um, that's why the thing disappeared. Yeah, you disappeared. Okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Bengali MD, I think, right? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, so uh, our Brisa, we don't have that much update, but the thing is that we have almost completed like 32. Uh, we have much uh, actually localized them. And now we're going to rebase it as uh, Sioko actually mentioned, like we have to rebase right now. So after that, we will go to, we will try to merge it to the main so that our the website get actually all of the updates, the 32 files. And uh, within this last one month, what, what we had is like, we had a session. Uh, we uh, took a session on um, teams regarding uh, promoting our CNCF glossary. So I also promo actually published it in my YouTube channel. So the session was published. So I mentioned how to contribute to CNCF glossary and so on. So that is the update from my side. Uh, so yeah. Thank you. Hey, great. That's nice progress. And thank you for sharing our glossary to our Indian community. Thanks. Okay, then um, I think it's my turn then. Uh, unfortunately, I have not much to tell. We have still uh, 11 published terms. And um, I think it's the same state like in our last meeting. So uh, I have to say not much happened. We uh, missed our last meeting and we try to, yeah, we are three people now. And we try to uh, make more pro progress and find more people to uh, translate us. But yeah, currently uh, we are not so satisfied <laughs> with the progress but we will we will uh, meet soon to yeah to find a way awesome uh, which just 
<laughs> yeah, I know that's a big issue for everyone. So I just put that maybe since it's a new year, we can maybe have some ideas and some plans for the year, um, but we can chat about that. Um, okay, round robin. So I think now it's like the uh, get up issue thing from the Spanish team. Skoko, you wanted to say something about it, right? Sure. Uh, already, Rardo, uh already mentioned about those two issues. And uh, by Carol, uh, new GitHub action, GitHub workflow uh, has been suggested it is to uh, automatically stale uh, all the issues and all the PRs. So uh, this case, uh, this P, uh, it, this PR is not merged yet, but when it is merged, uh, all the inactive PRs and issues, uh, more than six, 60 days, uh, will be marked as, as stale issue, labeled to stale. And after that stale, uh, Another with another twenty days, then that issue or PRs will be automatically closed, and surely that uh, issues and PRs can be reopened again, so uh, contributors don't need to worry about it. Anyway, it is auto automated uh, execution and. Uh, Spanish team will, uh, this uh, PR will be applied to Spanish team first, and Spanish team will share their experience whether this workflow works well and works for us. So uh, I think it is very nice proposal from localization team that can be covered, that can be applied to uh, local grocery globally. Uh, is there any question or suggestions regarding this uh, state workflow? Okay, I, I guess none. And next yeah. item, yeah. <laughs> next item is about the uh, uh, GitHub code space support. It is also suggested by Peter within who maintaining uh, Spanish localization team. And okay, maybe I can share my screen. So that what to show what it what it is. Okay, uh, since this the space support has been uh, merged. Uh, we can use this code space uh, uh, link in our glossary. Uh, code space is a hosted development environment by GitHub. So in the Readme, end of readme, you will find this patch open in GitHub code space. If you click this one, then you can generate your own development workspace uh, hosted by GitHub. So when you click this code space, uh, actually it takes time a little bit. Yeah, if you uh, create or access to code space, you will see uh, Visual Studio uh, uh, Visual Studio code like development environment. You will see glossary file trees and see content, and you can actually edit. 
and also you can uh, you can test your code is code can be built you can you can run site from that environment so actually it is good for uh, developers and not sure how, how many our contributors will use this code space support but anyway some folks will uh, try to use this kind of code space so uh, we uh, glossary repository also invited this kind of support so the site i opened here uh, it is actually hosted by GitHub from the uh, from the virtual environment. So you don't need to make your uh, development environment, localization environment in your uh, local computer. Instead, you can use hosted environment from GitHub by clicking this button. So it is just basic uh, information. Uh, no workflow, contribution workflow has been changed. You can, if you want to use this code space, you can use. So uh, that's all for the code space part. Uh, is, there, is there any question? Yeah, actually, you can just try to use this one. Uh, it is kind of a new functionality from GitHub, and it is GitHub service. And the final item is about uh, a new banner in our uh, glossary repository. Uh, it is banner for general data protection regulation. Uh, it has been added by Chris uh, Abraham. So if you open, you only open glossary site, you will see the uh, this personal data regulation setting. It has been early added and you will see this floating uh, icon in uh, glossary it is to uh, setting configure your data preference data protection preference so uh, i hope i i shared this uh, panel uh, in case you are curious about what is this new icon Thank you. That's all from my side. Uh, is, there, is there any question or comment? Okay, I, I guess none, and no, we can no, move no. to next item. <clears throat> Catherine, can you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just realizing I actually thought, like, now I realize that that little thing in the corner is a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> it looked for me like a paint like the first time i saw it yes. you know where the paint i don't know yeah, yeah and now it's too. like oh it's a cookie that's half <laughs> <laughs> i just realized it um yeah i think we wanted to discuss as well like i mean like one of the things that i um just thought of immediately when we were talking about recruiting uh volunteers i think that's probably uh something that we should kind of talk every year, like at least <laughs> once a year, maybe yeah. like at the beginning of the year is always a good time when, um, um, yeah, just, just to plan ahead when people are looking at conferences to go. And um, so I think, I mean, I think the like KCDs are, as, as mentioned before, like a really good uh, platform. So, have a look when uh, your local KCD is happening 
and try to submit a talk, right? And and then share that as well, like even if it's in your language. I think we created like a promo kit that is in a um, folder that should be linked in our channel, right? And then uh, there is already like a like a I created one because slide I did a deck. presentation once, a slide deck. So people can like everyone should add their decks in there, even if it's in a different language because you can see like how things are present because it's like either an inspiration or people can just copy and use the English version and and, and uh, just translate it or or do their own whatever right like it's easier to see if you can see what other people have been using and in these meetings as well it would be great to share maybe um what resonated? I don't know. Maybe Annalisa, you just said that you went and did a meetup. So, what went well? What do you think resonated with your audience? Um, is there anything that other people could learn from your experience? Well, I believe that um, personal experience is always uh, the best to share. It's like cases, case studies in a business environment. So, something very practical, something that was experienced firsthand. Um, so just to even um, to tell how you discover the glossary, why is a good way to enter the community. Of course, I talked, uh, I talked as a non-technical non person um, because that is my point of view, my standpoint. But I guess that uh, personal experiences are the best um, to be told and that can, uh, can have a grip on people that are listening. Uh, it's a good way for students, for example, or for rookies, uh, or for IT people that come from different environments or different um, parallel industries. Probably um, cloud native is not the same as, I don't know, software development for web or mm -hmm. uh, whatever. So um, it's a way to, to begin and be part of something and to understand how the community works, for example. Um, but I, I, I told about my, my, own, uh, my own experience. Mm -hmm. And did people say like, yeah, I wanna participate. I mean, like, a lot of people say <laughs> they want to, and then there is a difference between <laughs> saying and coming. Yeah. No, unfortunately we do not have big audiences. <laughs> Uh, we've yeah, got well, no, but like problems. sometimes one yeah, or yeah. two people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be honest, um, questions were made about the time that has to be spent on this kind of activities. That is something that is curious um, to answer because, uh, uh, of course, when you um, tell about your own experience, it seems you spend the whole day on those activities, but it's not always it's not always true and to reassure people that they can dedicate i don't know half an hour a week two hours a week three hours a week according to their business days of course but it, it's it's already enough it's not overwhelming so that people are not scared to get engaged because maybe mm -hmm. people think they have to take part to um several meetings or uh, dedicate at least 10 hours a week or whatever so they might be, um, how do you say, they might withdraw um, mm -hmm. in front of this um, idea or feeling that they have, that they get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not I also think that probably I will be in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No recruiting. I, mm. I think that, at least for me, I think that would be like something that would be like a big uh, positive thing is like, you're you're really increasing your network right like you're growing your network um you're knowing people in your and it's like when you're looking for a job the next time or like it, it is really good right because you're 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 meeting people from different companies in different industries so i think it's really important to meet people and and for yourself like and and for your personal growth but also professionally in the future so i think uh, that is that might be like a big point too right because you're that is definitely an, an aspect like most people are from different companies and for instance you're saying like you're um cl working closely with someone who's a competitor you know and I think I love yeah. that because it's like I hate it when it's like so 
you know, when people hate, it, you know, like, cause it's like at the end, you know, your competitor mm-hmm. might be your next employer because <laughs> it's very likely yeah, that it's, <laughs> yeah. so it's like, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, you've got the skills and you know, the market. So uh, it's more, yeah, I, I think that is like a huge, uh, at least I uh, see it as a huge plus, right? Like really meeting people and, and, and growing that network within the cloud native yeah. community. But probably that is, uh, if I may, that is um, a benefit that you can have. Um, um, doesn't matter the project you are sticking to or yeah, you are entering. Yeah, it's cloud so native. Just the community. So it can be, it's valid for the glossary team, for the glossary project, but it's valid for the cartographers, for the security tag or all the tons of projects and, and teams mm-hmm. that are yeah. yeah, but sometimes it's just like making a case to contribute to open source in general, whether it yeah. is code or non-code, right? Some people don't, yeah. I think when they're thinking about what, what you're saying, the time commitment is what what makes them hesitant. It's like, I, I'm sure that does not apply to the glossary only. It applies to any open source thing because that's yes. the same thing. Correct. So yes, yeah. I assume most people do not contribute to open source. I would assume that. You t- so it's like it's I think it's a case of making in general that contributions are really good for you and this is one type of contribution right yeah, yeah. so yes yeah, so I think meetups are great uh KCDs I think like I would just really look at what when is the next KCD I know Italy has one I know um in Central America there is one I know Mexico is not Central America but it's kind of <laughs> It goes with Latin number. So I think that's like a virtual one. It's the virtual one. And it's like, that would be the closest in your region, right, Rodolfo? Right. Uh, Guatemala, I think, is the closest. And I think Colombia will host the first in place uh, KCD. Mm -hmm. Will will those be virtual or in person? Uh, Guatemala virtual and the other one in person. I think. Oh, okay, great. Oh, that's great. I mean, like, it's good. Like, it's good that Guatemala is virtual because it's not Guatemala. It's the whole. It's all Latin America, basically. <laughs> anyway, yeah. except Brazil, uh, unless they speak uh, Portuñol, uh, right, Paulo? <laughs> um, and uh, Brazil has one, I know, right? So, uh, and Germany has not one yet. Maybe that's another project for the German team. No, no, just kidding. David. <laughs> oh no, they do have no, no. There was one in Munich yeah, and Berlin. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There was one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's Munich and Berlin. So that would be another thing. If you're, where are you based, David? That you mentioned that before. Saarbrücken. Saarbrücken. Yeah. You nobody know that, I guess. <laughs> I know it. I studied really? there for one year ages ago. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh. Cool. <laughs> oh. I lived in Schafbrücke. Schafbrücke, yeah, yeah, that's very near to, me, <laughs> to, to my place. I live in Dutweiler. Even smaller. Yeah. Then you know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's my yeah. place. We, yeah. we, we have here, uh, we organized a cloud native meetup mm-hmm. here in Saarbrücken. It's also maybe a good uh, opportunity to find people they uh, contribute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's just a little meet up about 20 people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it grows. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like the small and intimate, like, yeah, if you do one talk and get one person, that's like a huge win if you have a team of three. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so yeah, I think I would, uh, I would try to do those things, meetups and KCDs. Um, plan for a few talks um, or I mean like for you whenever you have the opportunity kind of submitting something sharing it with this group so people can learn from you I think that's what we can do any other ideas that people have for recruitment uh Catherine I uh, hello everyone nice to meet you uh hello. I'm Paulo Catherine knows me but uh I'm from Brazil uh, I speak Portuguese and don't speak English very well. And the Spanish, I try to make it Portuguese. So, <laughs> nice to meet you. Mucha, nice to meet you mucho gusto hablar con usted, Rodolfo. Uh, entonces, <laughs> mucho gusto. Uh, I, I think that uh, I not 
I think that one one good point to recruitment uh, that I want to implement this year uh, here, I have a, a good contact with uh, uh, academy university, and uh, my my plan for the couple of months, uh, the next couple of months, I'm not I'm not sure exactly where, because my company has the financial year, fiscal year, completing final fiscal quarter, final fiscal quarter is the next uh, three months. So it's some crazy moment, but uh, if possible, I want to recruit, uh, execute an event in a very important university in, in Brazil and uh, start to make a, uh, start to create this relationship between the university with, uh, with uh, not not the university on, on the concept of uh, institution but the people the 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 the, uh, the, the students and, and teachers that can put them to to works with uh, CNCF and uh, the first uh, objective to make them contribute and learn to contribute is about is with the glossary translation or any other project the documentation translation that is so much easy to understand all the concept of contributes and make part of the the open source uh, community it's much more simple than make code code is very difficult uh, so translation is not easy but comparable with uh, Hold is much more easy, and I, my plan is for the next uh, three months uh, is complete this. Let students do and work. Yeah, that's something that I actually was. I don't know. I forgot it now, but I was thinking about it too, and especially Sergio Rodolfo. You know him, right? Sergio, who organizes the Guatemala. And was Paulo, you know yeah. him too. <laughs> so yeah, he, he, he uh, yeah, Sorry. I've tried to convince him a few times. I don't know, like, <laughs> um, so that because it's like he is a professor for those who don't know, he's a professor at a university in Guatemala and he does a lot of stuff with the CNCF. His students even have given talks at KubeCon, which is great, right? You're just getting started, mm. uh, you haven't even started working and you're already doing KubeCon talks, so that's amazing. Um, mm. Because I think like, okay, for writing the first version, students is not a good, because it's like people, I have a lot of people who think it's easy to write definitions that are simple. And that's actually the most difficult thing because you need to know it very, very well. <laughs> you need to really understand it, but localiz localizing it because someone yeah. already had that. So now it's like that, I think like for students is just perfect, right? It's still, it's not easy but someone already did the research and so on and I, I think it's perfect actually for students so maybe yeah uh, I think that that's a good approach working with universities and um, some computer science classes you know that yeah. are uh, interested in that it's like yeah I think that would be ideal so if you manage to implement that somehow or get like a relationship with them maybe you can um uh, share your approach uh, and and how that went and then uh, share it with the group because that is actually would be ideal right because then you have a whole if you have one professor in one class you already have a lot of people who are interested like who are kind of engaged if the, if the professor believe it's a good approach you have a lot of people and so that would uh, go a long way um yeah, I get you. Exactly at this point, uh, the the idea is not define because define is something that come yeah. from is first in first time come from someone with expert expertise uh, and can define and uh, have a mm -hmm. some uh, some uh, uh, re uh, review about this. But the idea is translating, translating. For example, translate from English for Portuguese. It's something that's simple and simple. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Of course, you need sure. to have a, a pro the idea is, is create a pipeline that 
there is a translation in the review before submit, I will mm -hmm. implement this, but translations more is for them and also help them to learn about the concepts. Because when they try to translate, it's, it's studying the concept. What is yeah. this? Oh, this is it. And professor can work with, with yeah. the students. Yeah, like, there's some fit. quality control, right? The professor yes, is overseeing. And, and, so. Yes, and use this to teach. It's yes, very exactly. interesting because use this to teach how, uh, for example, how, what is fax? Fa sorry, fax, for sure as a service. That is a problem that we need to fix, right? <laughs> Remember, uh, what is fax? Well, oh, fax functions as a service. Okay, what's this? Explain the architect, explain it. Now let's translate, let's put this in Portuguese, in your language, let's do a help other guys to do this. The idea is, is this from the perspective of contribution from the students and professors in the first in the first round. The, the idea is this, I already contacted the one coordinator of the course, the uh, computer science course, and uh, we are uh, just to uh, have a, to, to format the idea to make, to make, to make this nothing informal a little bit more uh, formal in the concepts of the university, et cetera. But uh, we are close to do this. I think that in February, at most mid, mid of March, I have this formatted and we can run the first, the first uh, round in the second half of March or beginning of uh, April. And I have something good to share. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. And it's like, uh, Annalisa, uh, Rodolfo, if you have any contacts at, or your team has any contacts at uh, universities that, you know, in your countries, computer science courses, you know, that do, that do country, uh, computer science. I mean, that would be, that's a great, I mean, like, Paolo can share, but like, you can already reach out and ask, you know, I, I personally think it's like such a good idea. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, it just makes so much sense. And it would, yeah, it would really kind of solve for at least if, if you have one team that gets like that collaboration, it would solve the volunteer problem really quickly. Yeah, we can explore that idea. I think it's great also. From I think that I have a friend from Guatemala. I think I think that's Guatemala. I, I think so. Sergio. <laughs> Sergio, uh, it's a, pro a great professor there, and he uh, he I, I I'm I'm sure that he can help implement this there. Like I think this. You're talking there. about yeah. the same person, though. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Sergio. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, I've, I've asked him a few times. So Paolo, work on him too, and I think Rodolfo <laughs> knows him too. So it's like yep. we all. Yeah. So How we have we that him? university. So <laughs> we have one that we know of, and then maybe there's a university in Mexico as well, and one in Brazil you're working as well. So it's like, um, yeah, so definitely. Um, cool. Any other, dis I think those are great ideas. I'm going to put those in the notes as well and so that people can see it. Um, any other ideas that come up? Oh, what, one point, Catherine, just uh, if someone wants to uh, de debate or talk about this this idea more and uh, want my help, uh, please just contact me. I will be happy in help, of course. Sounds good. Uh, Sounds good. And the other point, just one other point, Catherine, and please, I'm, I'm uh, I, I think that's not the problem for this meeting, maybe not, but uh, remember that I asked it to improvement, a little improvement in the in the term functions as a service. And uh, I know that uh, we can, I, what, what's the problem? I have a, a translation waiting the decision. I have the, mm -hmm. my, my, my task translation for Portuguese, waiting the decision, what do we have for FAS? So if I, I can forget, delete what I did and submit X, as is uh, today, or I can wait for decision 
what you do, what the team will do for the English uh, definition. And we, yeah, so that's actually like on that. our agenda for today. So in the maintainer discussion session. So uh, okay. definitely we do not want to link to proprietary products because it's a CNCF open source kind of thing. And so, the, uh, so that's definitely a no. And if it is anywhere, we should delete that because we, we don't want to promote any proprietary products. And that's the same thing with KubeCon, you know, like we should talk about open source, never about proprietary things. Um, as to open source, um, personally, because it's like, I mean, you know, uh, my company uh, creates Linkerd. Of course, I would want to have Linkerd and the service mesh, but it's like, well, then Istio is going to say like, why isn't Istio? And then it's like, I feel like, are we... I don't know, I would just stay away from it. And it's like, I never even thought about adding Linkerd there because I don't think it's the right, you know, cause you're then promoting different, cause it already says like service mesh and then you go to the landscape and you can see, oh, that, that's a, these them. are the service yeah. meshes. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna run into favoritism or, you know, or that people that work on the glossary mm -hmm. have maybe like hidden agendas, like me trying to add Linkerd wherever yeah. possible. And then uh, pe like, it just feels like staying out of it because the glo the, the glossary is defining something. What it, what does it mean? Right. What does the con what is function as a service? It does not tell you these are the services that you need. So that once you know what fast is, you can look for it and then you can see. So personally, I would just stay away from it because someone will always be say like, why is my project not listed? And at some point, there are so many projects. I feel like, and there may be, because we know like the, the rules that we have applied have changed. Like first we were doing something and that's why we uh, um, deprecated a lot of terms because people were submitting at the beginning. Uh, we were like, sure. And then we we're like, hold on, like this is cloud native. And so we are learning. We're just a little bit over a year old. Um, so we are learning as we're going and we're creating new rules. So if you see anything, because we may not have applied those rules as strictly, uh, then let us know. But uh, that's personally my opinion. Mm -hmm. I saw Annalisa like heavily yeah. <laughs> nodding. Yeah, no, so I, cool. if I may yeah. add, we had the same approach uh, for the cloud native maturity model. So the cloud native maturity model uh, talks about people, processes, technologies, and so on. So uh, it doesn't want to be prescriptive, even if the projects are open source projects but it's too difficult to say, hey, uh, let's take those on boards and not mention someone else. Um, maybe in three months, there's a new project and it's difficult to keep track of what is added and what is deprecating and what is live. And so, so we said, do not mention anything, just stay at a higher level. Um, mm -hmm. So it's Perfect. the same approach that Catherine was, was uh, uh, perfect. I, I don't want to extend this discussion here. As you said, it's a maintainer discussion. And mm. my question is how participating in maintainer discussions? It's this another question. How we can I can participate in there? I, I, that's one question. My question, what you can answer me in offline. And the second point is I, I agree totally with you. My, my suggestion only is uh, if you don't want to measure any project, no, no, makes sense, okay, because you have a maintenance problem, fail to mention someone, etc. But uh, my suggestion is point to the landscape. Point to the landscape. In the landscape has the list of projects, so you can check there what's there, because uh, the, the the what's difficult. Today is difficult, in my opinion, as a user. Oh, I read the, the I read the, the glossary. Okay, good. Ah, fast. Okay, there is projects. Okay, where I need to go to the the role site and search for the the landscape, and I need to know. Oh, there is a landscape. Oh, let me check what product is the a kind of uh, fast, for example. Uh, my uh, what I mean is create a circuit between the glossary and the other documentation. So one is glossary, the other is landscape. So we can connect them, connect them, make a link. You can check the progress in this kind of 
feature or this kind of uh, uh, term in this point in the glossary because it's helped people to make connections and understand what we are defining. That is a, an idea, just not to list, but connect with where you can find this. Because- Yeah, we, I mean, we could add like I, a little sentence at find. the end of each thing that is like a project category to check out the- Yeah, just a link of, the projects that follow this pattern or follow this uh, is in the glossary. The, uh, for example, oh, someone say that there isn't glossary saying that the microservice architecture is this. Okay, but there is a definition of microservice, not definition, but there is a definition of architecture, point one, one point zero, to be honest, to be, if I remember, that say, oh, cloud native architecture is in the GitHub. So someone create the definition in the glossary, but not point this definition to the, the uh, role of the term that is in the GitHub from the CNCF. So for example, me, I, I had to, my, my example, I had to do a document, a presentation about CNCF. And about cloud native architecture, right? I need to do. I, I had I had to do, and uh, I had many materials, but uh, I want to check the exactly where's the where's the uh, uh, site or point that CNCF published that information. So I I lost one day searching for uh, all stuff for CNCF, GitHub, glossary, et cetera, to find the, the find, to find, for example, the definition, what is cloud native architecture? It's there, it's somewhere in the GitHub. So my suggestion is just connect the points. Uh, if you have a definition or have a project, maybe not, I agree, you cannot list this because it's error prone and the, uh, in, involve uh, create a, a requirement for maintenance, but link to to where is the project? Where is the project in the landscape? So go to the landscape, check there what projects follow this pattern. Just a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, Paolo. I think your idea is very nice, linking uh, our definition to use per uh, uh, product, project, or other document. It is very, very beneficial to uh, readers. Uh, but my concerning point, actually uh, maintaining this concerning point is also uh, how to maintain that links. Uh, because uh, when you link this has been added or when we when you uh, uh, terms has been defined, we need to check uh, these uh, links are really uh, eligible to be there or not. It actually uh, load to maintainers and reviewers. So uh, we are not maybe we possibly include uh, long, uh, not appropriate links. And also we need to check, keep check those uh, outside links are available or not. Uh, it's very uh, crucial point to uh, us, but maybe as you said, uh, in case of CNCF landscape, uh, it's actually uh, uh, maintained by CNCF. So uh, would better to find uh, some link, trivia link, but uh, much outside content, links to outside content is a little bit uh, concerning point. So uh, I think uh, we understand uh, what is a uh, beneficial point of your idea. So maybe you can keep uh, discuss and uh, make some examples, useful examples 
which is beneficial and not to uh, incur uh, additional effort. I think we should uh, find and balance that point as well. Uh, so, uh, let me say, uh, Siku, uh, what's it? Oh, so cool. yeah. correct? Seko. Yeah. Oh, Seko, I, I, I completely agree with you, but I'm talking just only about the links controlled or material controlled by CNCF, not outside there. Because uh, uh, outside there, it's really, again, a problem for maintenance. We don't yeah. have control, etc. But Glossary as landscape or special definition that come from CNCF, it's something that should be in the same uh, uh, context, yeah. right? If, if, not if, outside, not something from, yeah. from for example, uh, Linkergy or something from other guys or other companies. No, no, no. Please, no. Yeah. Not if they are uh, very close link or uh, those terms are very close. Uh, for instance, in case of fast FAAS uh, term, uh, in landscape, there is only uh, server list only, server list category only. So actually, they are not exactly the same. So, Maybe we are not sure uh, we need to uh, provide uh, serverless link to link uh, in landscape in the uh, fast uh, uh, definition. So those kind of thing is also a concerning point. So maybe it is uh, not too intuitive but uh, sure, uh, I think uh, all uh, contributors and maintainers in glossary agree with your uh, point. So maybe let's improve or let's make uh, some uh, example or proposal by PR so that uh, it actually works or not. Yep, perfect. Thank you. And that would apply only to the categories of the landscape, right? Of course. But then we would have to make sure that they're all covered. Um, so yeah, I think like, and, and uh, Paolo, uh, if you look, I don't know, have you seen? I don't know if you've, if you, pro you joined later, so you probably did not see it. I'm going to type, um, share the link off the agenda again, and then you will see there is a cloud native learning journey which is solving that very issue. That's a project that's coming, which is basically linking all the projects and all the information together. So based on your frustration of things, I think this will appeal to you. So that's something we're working on, the CNCF, uh, the landscape, the glossary, the definition, what everything will be part of that learning journey. It will be all tied together and linked in one place. Um, so people do not have to look all over the internet to find information. Um, oh, yeah, mute. Sorry, sorry, Kateri. I'm I'm put my name here, right? Yes, please. Oh, thanks. Um, okay. Oh, we're already. Oh my God, this is. I thought this was going to be a short meeting, <laughs> so we're already at time. <laughs> Where is Noah? <laughs> yeah, he probably uh, heard me somehow <laughs> saying it will be short. Um, Bye, Noah. <laughs> we're publicly shaming you, Noah. <laughs> this is coming on the internet. <laughs> you said you would be here. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, uh, this you. is a really good productive discussion. Um, and again, as a reminder, uh, the idea for this is not only to tell you like how many things you have merged. I mean, that, it's nice to provide those feedbacks, but I think like actually brainstorming and seeing mm -hmm. what are the problems, how do I recruit people, uh, where do how do we improve things? You know, like for, like like Paulo's idea to add a link. Like that's like ideally what these meetings should be. So 
you know, uh, you know where to find the agenda, I hope. If not, it's linked in the channel. At any point, you can add, like if you have an idea tomorrow, you can add it tomorrow already for the next meeting and so on. So at least for me, I forget things really easily. So I have to add it as soon as they're on my mind. That's why it's pinned there. Uh, so the agenda is for everyone. It's not only for some, you know, anyone can add things that they wanted to discuss. So um, if you have some ideas based on discussions that we had today, please add them. And let's have these types of discussions. This is so much more fun and informative than having one person present. This is what we did. Blah, blah, blah. This is not so uh, I would much rather this to be like a real open discussion. So, okay, cool. Well, thanks for joining everyone. And uh, I will see you hopefully all uh, in a month. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Nice Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. And it's too. <laughs> Bye. Ciao, 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 ciao. Bye. Bye.